Today I will show you how to use the Perspective Warp tool to create this interesting effect in Photoshop. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you how to use the Perspective Warp tool in Photoshop to create a few different interesting effects. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. Alright guys, this is the first image for today and on this one I want to show you how to use the Perspective Warp tool in general and then we will go to that requested part, how to bend a sea level or any other flat surface. So let's start with uh, this image, let's duplicate the layer, background layer, just in case we mess something up to have a backup version, Control command j and then go to the edit and Perspective Warp. And here we have now a Perspective uh, Warp uh, tool palette. And we have a layout, verb, those lines, hashtag, and some undo, cancel, and OK option. I will show you later what are those three tools for. So first thing what we need to do is to create a perspective planes. And we will use those planes to modify the perspective of the image. So let's do that. Just press and drag to create the first plane, first grid, and just release the mouse button. And then go and use these corners, these pins to align those pins with the building, to align the, this plane with the building's wall perspective, like so. And now we have something, oops, something like this. Then we need to create another perspective plane to align it with this part of the building. Okay, just press and click and drag, like so. And we need to stitch those two planes together. How to do that? Well, that's pretty easy, just move this plane closely enough to the first one and you will see those blue lines appears. And when you see blue, those blue lines appears, just release the mouse button and that's it. The planes will automatically stitch together. And then just do the same. Just align the with the building's perspective like so. And now we need to include all those parts in the selection in those perspective planes. How to do that? That's really easy too. Just press and hold shift option and move the edges. And with the shift selected, you will move this in a perspective. Otherwise, you will move it something crazy. And we don't want that. Right, let's undo that. And with the shift, let's move like so. With the shift, let's move this one just to include the whole building. And let's just include the top part too. And that's it. Now we, when we are done with our layout, let's go here to a warp option. Press and click warp. And now the fun begins. Okay. Anytime we move any corner here, we will change the perspective of the image. For example, if we move this, see how the perspective of this building is completely changed. Whoops, too much. Let's undo that. Again, see, it's really nice. And this is really nice. Like we went from the center of that, uh, between those two walls, a little bit to the left. Or if we undo this and maybe do something like so, it appears like we went a little bit to the right wall. And that's really great options. option. Let's undo this. Let me show you what are those options for. The first one, vertical lines, means that if you press that all, these lines that are supposed to be vertical will be completely vertical like this and let's undo that and the second one as you can guess all horizontal line will be completely horizontal like so but we don't want that and the third one will make both horizontal lines horizontal and vertical lines completely vertical like this and we don't want now to use those options we have another option here if we press and hold shift and go over the line, the line will become, become yellow. And that means that if you click on it, it will stay yellow, we will be completely straight. And if you choose any pin above or below that line, you can move whole line like so. Okay, and let's use this line and let's move it like so. And let's use this pin, let's leave it like so. And maybe move something like so. And if we now press OK and crop this image a little bit, we have impression that 
we went from the left side to the right side of that image. And that's really nice option. So let's undo that because we don't want that. And let me show you what you can do with this perspective work tool to change the shape of the building a little bit. I will really fast create those two perspective grids and align with the building's perspective like so. Okay, and just move this a little bit up like so and go to the verb. And now you can do some crazy stuff. Maybe you can just go and move this like so and create some really crazy effect, something like this or this, I don't know, maybe like this and press OK. And now you can cut out the building in this shape and maybe paste it in some other photo to create maybe some interesting composite of completely uh, different shape uh, buildings. I don't know, something crazy. Just to know that that's the option too. Right now that you know how to use this perspective or tool, let's go and bend the sea level. For that, we will use this image, okay? And of course, we will again press Control Command J to duplicate it, just in case, and go to before go to the perspective warp uh, perspective warp tool. Yeah, let me show you what I want to do. I want to bend this image across this line, something like so, not like this, but a little bit like so. I will bend the right part of the image down and the left part will stay intact. And for that, we will need two perspective grids. The first one will be on the left side of that line and the second one will be, oh, sorry, the right side and the second one will, will be uh, from the left side of that line. So let's delete the line because we don't need it anymore. And now let's go to the edit, perspective warp and just create two perspective grids like so. And Let's use the middle points to create that folding line like so maybe maybe this is okay. And when you're satisfied with that, just go to the warp, wait a few seconds for Photoshop to calculate all of that. And now you can move this corner as you can see and this corner here. Let's unzoom it to have better view. And when you're satisfied with the result, just press OK here and wait a few seconds for Photoshop to calculate the effect. And now you will have that famous bending surface effect. And that's really easy. That's how it's done. There are no any other magic in it. You can maybe put some ship on uh, that uh, banded part and maybe you can make uh, some interesting photo manipulation that ships goes downhill with some crazy effects. I don't know. Now I will show you the same effect on another image just to repeat the procedure one more time and we are finished for today. So let's do that. This is the image. Just press Control Command J to duplicate the layer just in case. Go to Edit, Puppet Warp, choose um, Create Two Planes, okay, and stitch them together. Choose a folding point, folding line by creating line with this, with this points like so maybe and now press warp when you're ready wait a few seconds for Photoshop to calculate it and now just move this down let's unzoom this a little bit and move this down and that's basically it press ok wait a few seconds for Photoshop to calculate the effect and wow we are done see how beautiful effect and we have a little bit problem here if we uncheck the background layer, the first one, original one, we have a hole here, but we can really easily fix that. And how to fix that? Just use the lasso tool, go all around that like so. And that's right, content aware fill. Go to the edit, fill and choose content aware. Press OK. And that's it. We have fill this gap really easily. If you're not satisfied with the result, you can go a little bit more, repeat this procedure and that's it. Right guys, here's the effect. Let me show you before and after, before and after. So that's it for today. This is really easy and fun tool to use and you can create really fun and interesting effect with it. Right guys, I hope that you like it and that you learned something new from today's episode. It would be really fun to see your work, your creativity with this tool. And if you have something interesting to show me, please 
hashtag it on Instagram with NS underscore tutorials, and I will make sure to see it. All right, guys, if you have some questions regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. Of course, I will be glad to answer it. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye-bye.